Um, remember, we didn't quite finish Humphrey before we left, so I wanted to read it to you guys so you can watch it um, on a video. Um, when we were last reading, Humphrey was at Ty's house and their TV was driving him crazy. Like somebody was up all the time watching the TV. And then um, Humphrey pulled out the cord. And then, let's see, Deely, the little, I said the little sister, was whining that there was nothing to do because there was no TV. And the dad said, well, when I used to stay at my grandma's, I didn't have a TV. She wouldn't allow it. And AJ asked, what'd you do? Oh, Ty was the brother, right? Oh, we were busy every minute. We played cards and board games and word games, and we dug in her garden and played tag. A lot of times we just sat on the porch and talked. My grandma, she could talk. What'd you talk about? Oh, she'd tell us stories about her growing up and ghosts and funny things, like the time her uncle was walking in his sleep and went to church in his pajamas. So I remember then, um, I think what at the end, Humphrey finally said it was quiet for the first time since he'd arrived and he went to sleep. So now we're on chapter 12, Peace Breaks Out. Early in the morning, Ty, Dee and AJ raced downstairs and played Crazy Eights. Later, they ran outside and threw a football around the yard. The Thomases were having breakfast with Beau when the phone rang. Mr. Thomas talked for a few minutes, mostly saying, uh-huh, that's fine. When he hung up, he told Mrs. Thomas, we're going to have a visitor, but don't tell Anthony James. Ooh, a mystery. I like mysteries because they're fun to solve. Then again, I don't like mysteries because I don't like knowing what's going on. So wait, so then again, I don't like mysteries because I don't like not knowing what's going on. So I waited and waited. A few hours later, the doorbell rang. The visitor turned out to be Garth Tugwell and his father. I really appreciate this, Mr. Tugwell told the Thomases. It was Miss Brisbane's idea. Since Garth can't have Humphrey at our house right now, she suggested that he could help AJ take care of him over here. Sounds like Miss Brisbane, as if I'm trouble to take care of. But Garth had been crying because he couldn't have me. So maybe, maybe she was trying to be nice. After Mr. Tugwell left, Mr. Thomas called AJ in. AJ ran into the room and practically backed out again when he saw Garth. We have a guest, said Mrs. Thomas, or Mr. Thomas. Shake hands, Anthony. Garth is here to help you take care of Humphrey. AJ and Garth reluctantly shook hands. How come, asked AJ. Garth shrugged his shoulders. Miss Brisbane said to. Well, come on, we'll clean his cage and get it over with, AJ said. The boys didn't talk much while they cleaned the cage, but they started giggling when they cleaned up my potty corner. I don't know why it makes everybody giggle. After they stopped giggling, they started talking and kidding around. They decided to let me out of the cage. So they took a set of old blocks from Deeley's room and built me a huge maze. Oh, I loved mazes. I think my kids used to do that with our hamster. That was pretty fun. Um, let's see. When we were all tired of that game, AJ offered to teach Garth to play Crazy Eights. And then Ty and Deeley joined them in a game of Go Fish. Nobody mentioned the TV. Nobody shot any rubber bands. Later in the afternoon, the kids were all outside playing football. I was fast asleep until Mrs. Thomas came into the den with a broom and started sweeping. A minute later, Mr. Thomas entered. What are you doing, hon? Well, oh, what are you doing, hon? What does it look like? I'm sweeping. You know, all this snacking we do in here makes a real mess on the floor, she said. Bo's asleep, her husband asked. Uh-huh. Mr. Thomas walked over to his wife and took the broom away from her. Then you sit down and rest a spell, hon. I'll sweep. Go on, don't argue. Mrs. Thomas smiled and thanked him and sat down on the couch. Mr. Thomas swept all around the outside of the room, even behind the TV. Uh-oh. When he got there, he stopped sweeping and leaned down. Well, I'll be, he muttered. What's wrong, asked Mrs. Thomas. The TV is unplugged, he said. It's unplugged. He came out from behind the TV, plug in hand and a very puzzled look on his face. But it couldn't have just come unplugged while we were sitting there watching. I mean, a plug doesn't just fall out, he said. Plug it in, see if it works, his wife told him. Well, you guessed it. The TV came on as bright and loud as ever. 
I don't get it, Mr. Thomas muttered, but at least we don't have to pay to get it fixed. Mrs. Thomas stared at the screen for a few seconds, then glanced out the window at her kids playing happily outside. Charlie, what do you say we keep it unplugged for a couple more days, she asked. We just won't tell the kids. Mr. Thomas grinned, then he bent down and unplugged the TV. Couldn't hurt, he said. He put down the broom and sat on the couch near his wife, and the two of them, the two of them just sat there in the den, giggling like, well, like stop giggling Gale. Suddenly, Mr. Thomas looked over at me. You don't mind a little peace and quiet, do you, Humphrey? No, 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 I squeaked, and I promptly fell asleep. Things were a lot better when A.J. Garth and I retu returned to room 26. Oh, yeah, it was A.J.'s house, Ty's his brother. Um, no rubber bands flew through the air. Garth didn't trip anybody or make fun of anybody. Hmm, I wonder what happened. That meant Gail didn't get in trouble for giggling. Heidi didn't get in trouble for speaking out without raising her hand because she wasn't trying to tell Miss Brisbane what Garth, what Garth had done. But the best change was Saya who did raise her hand every single day. One day, she raised her hand to volunteer to stay in during recess to clean the chalkboard. Miranda raised her hand too. Miss Brisbane chose them both. Girls, I think I can trust you to stay here while I run this report down to the principal's office, Miss Brisbane told them. Of course she could trust them. Once the girls were alone, they began to talk. I really liked your singing, Miranda told Saya. Thanks. My mom and I are going to a musical version of Cinderella over at the college this weekend, Miranda continued. We have an extra ticket. Would you like to come with us? My mom will pick you up. Saya quickly turned to face Miranda. Oh yes, I've not been to a play before. Miranda grinned. Good, I'll have my mom call your mom. Suddenly, Saya's face fell. Oh, what is it about Saya's mom? Oh, better not. She's so busy. Um, give me your number and I'll have my father call your mother. Saya watched Miranda's reaction carefully. So did I. Cool. That was it. Miranda jotted down her number. Saya looked greatly relieved. I knew that Miranda's mother didn't care how well Saya's mother spoke English. Maybe now Saya would figure that out too. Another great thing that happened was that Mrs. Brisbane started reading a book out loud to the class. Sometimes I doze right through these sessions, but this time she picked out a really good book. When she announced that it was about a moose, oh, not a moose, a mouse, when it was about a mouse, Gail giggled. What did she say? Art whispered to Richie. Pay attention, Art, Miss Brisbane said. It's about a mouse. Several of the boys groaned. Baby stuff, one of them muttered. We'll see, Miss Brisbane told them. She started to read, and oh, what a tale it was, all about mice no bigger than I am, who were great warriors. I was longing to put on some armor myself by the time she stopped reading. Continue tomorrow, she announced as she stuck a bookmark in place and closed the book. Tomorrow? That woman truly has a mean streak. She's proved it again and again. I would have sneaked out of my cage at night to finish the book, but she's so mean, she stuck it in her desk drawer, the one she locks with a key. Grrr. The weekend came around quickly, though, and I went home with Richie. I'm still not quite sure how many people actually live at the Ren Rinaldi's house because there was always so many people coming and going. Aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, neighbors. One meal seemed to flow right into the next, and Richie's mom was very generous with treats. I'll tell you one thing. She could never be lonely or hungry, or you could never be lonely or hungry at the Rinaldi's house. On Sunday afternoon, guess who showed up? Remember Richie's uncle? That's right, Aldo Amato. This time, my buddy Aldo was not lonely because he brought along his girlfriend, Maria, to meet the family. She was a very nice lady who wore her hair long, her long hair piled up on her head. She was dressed in bright red from head to toe, red earrings, red sweater, red skirt, and red shoes. I think red is a very happy color. I think Maria is a very happy person, especially when she's with Aldo. All the Rinaldis made a big fuss over Maria and praised the bread and cookies she'd brought from the bakery where she worked. 
After all the commotion of their arrival died down, I heard Aldo tell Maria, now there's someone really important I want you to meet. And he introduced her to me, me, me. Believe it or not, Humphrey is one of my best friends, he told her. And he was the very first friend I told about you. Then I am honored to meet you, Humphrey, Maria said, smiling down at me. The pleasure is all mine, I squeaked. See, he likes you, said Aldo. And indeed, I did. The world seemed like a pretty nice place for a handsome young hamster like me, I can tell you. I was sitting on top of the world when I returned to room 26 on Monday. But I just about toppled off when Miss Brisbane made an alarming announcement. Oh, Miss Brisbane. Class, as you know, this will be a short week due to Thanksgiving. And that means Humphrey will need a home for four days instead of two. Now, who wants to volunteer? Mm. You won't believe what I'm going to say. Not one hand went up. Oh no. I actually fell off my wheel. Miss Brisbane was surprised too. No one, she asked. Heidi, didn't you want to take Humphrey home? Oh yes, but we're going to my grandma's house for Thanksgiving, she explained. Art, didn't you ask for Humphrey last week? Miss Brisbane asked. Yes, but we're having all my relatives for Thanksgiving and mom says it wouldn't be a good time, Art explained. And so it went. Every single classmate had big plans for Thanksgiving. Plans that didn't include having an extra hamster around. I was worried, worried, worried. I didn't want to spend four days alone in room 26. I worried all day Monday. I worried all day Tuesday. I worried even more all day Wednesday. At the end of the day, Principal Morales stopped by to give Miss Brisbane an envelope. I think it was her paycheck because she was especially glad to see him. I have a huge favor to ask, she said. Sure, Sue, what is it? Asked Principal Morales. He wore a tie with little turkeys all over it. Could you possibly take Humphrey for the weekend? I had my paws crossed that he said yes, that he'd say yes, but Principal Morales didn't even smile. Oh, Sue, I'd love to, but we're going out of town for the holiday, he told her. Another time I'd love to. Another time wouldn't matter. I needed a place to go now. After the principal left, Miss Brisbane sighed and began gathering up her papers. Then she turned to me. Well, Humphrey, it looks like you're going home with me for Thanksgiving, she said grimly. My fate was sealed. I was going to the home of the woman who had once vowed to get rid of me for four whole days. And frankly, I was worried I'd never come back. Tip 12. If you must leave your hamster with a caretaker, make sure that it is someone you know and trust. All right, that's the end of that chapter. Whew, lots going on with Humphrey. Okay, we'll read again soon.